in the middle of Egypt, and he was in a total state of prophecy. And so what happened on, on Leo Pesach was this strange thing happened, is that we, we were not allowed to leave our houses. It says it three times, don't leave your houses, you've got to be inside of your houses. And yet, there's an incredible midrash that we have that says that we were taken that night to the <coughs> Temple Mount in Jerusalem. And I bring this in my Passover book. We were taken to the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, and we were returned back to Egypt, and in the morning we left physically. So basically, I gave it away, but it doesn't matter is that somehow something happened there in the middle of the night, even though we were in the middle of our homes, but we were in the temple. And there was really no temple. So the Mitras is basically saying that we were in the heavenly temple, in what eventually would be the physical temple in Jerusalem, but there wasn't any, so it was the heavenly temple. And we went there on Passover night, and we returned back to Egypt, and we left in the morning physically. So the way that it has to work out very briefly is that we didn't leave our houses and we didn't go anywhere and come back. What happened was that Egypt dissolved. We too reached the level that Moshe had reached. Because Moshe had reached it, we reached the level that Egypt dissolved. Paro and Egypt don't exist. It's only an outer layer on reality. And we experience the inner layer. We inner, we experience the inner layer of reality. And when you're in that inner layer of reality, then there's a oneness that <coughs> that's called the heavenly temple, the heavenly Beit Hamikdash. That's the original Passover experience. Is that Egypt, the shell of Egypt, falls away, and we realize that it was really never in Egypt. It was just a matrix. It was just a mental construct, and that we overcame that. It's like Neo in the movie, in The Matrix. At a certain point, he overcomes the Matrix. It's a very exciting moment in the movie, right? So Passover was that for us. And then the next day, when we left Egypt, so we had to go down. So we lost that incredible level. And for 49 days, it was like... We left this incredible mountain experience. Not a little area mountain, but we were lifted up. It was called the Ubenay Sel Yetsu Mimitsaim Hamushim. I don't know the, the words for some reason, they're not coming to me. Hamushim Alu Bene Sel That we left Hamushim. So there's many different levels, but one of them is that it's, it's written without a vav, so it can be read Hamishim. Hamishim is 50. And so the concept of 50, we were lifted up to the level of 50. We were lifted up to the level above the world of 7, of 7 times 7, the world of miracle. It's a, it's a level of consciousness that when you're in that state of consciousness, there's no question that who's running the world. There's no question of what's real, what's real with a capital R. And when you have that, and that was built into our into our psyche, into our soul. And even though it was taken away afterwards, after Passover, and we had to go through the desert for 49 days, but the impression is left. And every time a miracle happens, even though the actual miracle is mistalek, it, 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 um, it's taken away from us, but the impression is allowed to remain there. And so we have in our souls, we have the impression. Uh, that's the best word in English that we have for a rishimu. An impression. I was thinking the other day about children are impressionable. That's interesting, right? They're impressionable, meaning to say you can you can stamp your stamp on them and it it stays. Uh, and we were children and we got those stamps, but deep down below all of the stamps that we got from the outside is we got stuff from the highest level of our soul. That those impressions are there, and that's what Passover and Shavuos are meant to bring out. In the middle, we lose that light, and we go down into the trough, the valley. But we say this incredible bracha, called Asher Kedishanu B'Mitzvata V'Tzivanu, Al Sfirat Omer. And Sfirat Omer doesn't just mean that we count the Omer. It's 
similar to what we said on Passover in the Haggadah, the Hayum is suffering kol alayla b'yitziat Mitzrayim. The expression is that there were five rabbis, the five great rabbis of the of the generation. They were in Bnei Brak. In Bnei Brak is a place, but in the Haggadah, it's symbolic for Bnei Brak, children of the lightning. What is lightning? Lightning is when the, the night sky lightens up for a moment, and you can see, and then it's dark again. But the impression is left. You saw. Right? B'nai Brak is they tried to bring down the light that originally shone, the power of the consciousness that originally shone, ca- reality with a capital R, the reality behind all the realities that we think that, were, that are real, they tried to bring that down into the Roman exile, just as had, had, it had come down and manifested in the Egyptian exile, which was the prototypical exile of all the exiles. Exile means when the soul falls asleep in its descent into this world. That's where we are right now. Whatever the exile is called, our souls are asleep. But we are given these holidays, which are like windows of opportunity, Windows, what's it called in Cape Canaveral, Cape Kennedy? Windows of opportunity, right? When you have like, when you're, if you're going to shoot over there, so you need to shoot over here now because it's, it's going to go, whatever. It's like, come, it's an opening. It's an opening in space-time of an original light that's shown, and you can now access that light. And that light is supra-mundane. It lifts you up above the seven into the level of eight, into Hamishim. Fifty and eight are very similar. 7 times 7 plus 1, or 7 plus 1. The infinite. It lifts you up into eternity. We, I, I don't want to go too much, but please forgive me for a little bit more, okay, of, of, of kind of filling in the blanks of the symbol system that we have. And it shouldn't be a foreign symbol system. It should be a system that's, that we're at home with and that means something to us. Numbers mean something. Numbers have symbolic meaning to us, and they their memory aids to, to something that happened once. And we can access that happening through the words and the numbers. And we're just building up within the next few minutes in order to say the bracha for the Omer. And to define what it means, al to Omer. So I went back to the Haggadah where I said that we were, they were misafrim b'yitziyat misayim koloto alayla. They were <coughs> literally, it seems, it says that they were telling the suffering, Sipur, they were misafrim, be it Sit Muslim, they were telling of the of the of the exodus from Egypt all that night. But we know that misafrim means it's also connected to the word sapphire in English. And the word to shine. They were shining, they were trying to bring <coughs> down, they were trying to access that high level and bring down and shine that light into that entire night. As the Aptar Rav says of Abraham Yeshua Heschel, they were trying to bring down the light of the Exodus into that night of the Roman exile that would last until Mashiach to give the people of Israel the strength to go on as we were going to march <laughs> through that incredible valley called exile, which is symbolically we do every year in the Omer period is we, we go through the valley where things are hard and we don't have immediate access to the light. So the bracha that we say is al sfirata Omer is the shining down of the higher light into the Omer, which is symbolic word for <coughs> the barley offering that we brought the day after Pesach, which is an Omer. An Omer simply is a measure. But it symbolizes what's called Malchus, right? Malchus. The Shechina in exile, she needs, and that's something inside of us, we need that light shining into us to give us the ability to be able to be real even within the valley experience when we're not being lifted up. Did that make sense? Mm-hmm. I'll say it again. Mm-hmm. Is that we have these incredible two mountains, Passover and Shavuot. And in the middle we have this valley. But every day we say this bracha, which the Kabbalists consider one of the most important brachot 
of the entire 